trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, because the day of the Lord is near. There are powers of darkness that are shaking the nations, the suffering, the woes, the hunger, the pestilences, the famines, and all the groanings of the earth through the earthquakes, the mudslides, and all the floods, and all the things coming, all of these things that Jesus prophesied. All things will pass away, but the word of God will not pass away. This is where we are, beloved. Darkness is permeating, pushing in. The day of the Lord is coming so close. And if it catches us the way we are, we shall not be able to stand. Hello everybody watching me. God bless you. This is Noreen here at the Nations Prayer Mountain. I would love to invite you this one more time to the camp, to the Trumpet Camp 2024. The Trumpet Camp 2024 is happening this Saturday here at the Nations Prayer Mountain in Seguku. Saturday will be the 20th of January. I've been inviting you to this camp and it is here just right next door. 2024, Dr. John Molinde, among other speakers, are excited, ready, power-packed, anointed to equip you for the Great Commission. Come one, come all. Registration is still ongoing. Thank you so much, those of you who have already registered. And to those of you who have not yet registered, registration is still ongoing. Visit us at our website at www.wtm.org or visit us at the Trumpet Center in Kampala, opposite Bank of Uganda. Or you can come here at the Nations Prayer Mountain. We have people ready to assist you, to help you register for this camp meeting. Where else can you be at the gate of 2024? Come and get equipped. We have a great commission. Come and get equipped. Come and get the materials to facilitate you, to equip you, to help you finish this great commission. A special thank you to our partners. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for standing with this ministry financially. Your prayers. Thank you for supporting this ministry. Thank you, our subscribers. Your subscriptions are tremendous. Continue subscribing for those of you who have not yet hit the button. And thank you for liking. The more you like these teachings, the more they reach out to a number of people. So like and share. Thank you for uh, visiting our social media handles we are on instagram on facebook on youtube on twitter as world trumpet mission thank you so much uh, we also have a bible challenge it's called a bible marathon we read 40 chapters daily we are aiming at finishing or completing the entire bible from genesis to revelation within 40 days you can do this you can challenge yourself and read 40 chapters a day i assure you at the end of the 40 days you would have accomplished the bible from genesis to revelation this has already started it began on 3rd of january thank you those of you who are on this whatsapp group thank you for your comments thank you for sending in your revelations and we thank the holy spirit and we thank his leading for what you're sharing it is amazing those of you who have not yet joined or you want a friend or a family member to join the whatsapp group the link is in the description share it with your friends and share it with your family members it's a challenge but you can do all things through christ who strengthens you you can do this once again don't forget the trumpet camp is launched is starting is beginning this saturday on the 20th and lots of dr john molinde's books will be available for sale books like nation at crossroads total surrender altars the midnight hour and many more books buy these books they're so equipping they're full of knowledge full of wisdom full of revelation buy a book for a friend gift someone with one of these books at the start of the year thank you so much and i'll be happy to see you on saturday dr john will be happy to see you and our media crew thank you so much god bless you hello there I'm Dr. John Molinde, the Global Overseer of World Trumpet Mission. It's my pleasure to invite you to an oncoming camp. It's called the Trumpet Camp. And we are going to be having 
many people come from the nations, from Asia, from Europe, from the Middle East, from Africa, from North and South America. And these are people hungry to see God's kingdom in their nations. We are all going to be at the prayer mountain, Seguku prayer mountain for all nations. The theme we are addressing is Go Nations. Go Nations. It comes out of the scripture which says, Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. I want to remind my fellow Ugandans that this is our calling. Our calling is a missionary nation. God has spoken to us in so many different fora, so many different times, that he wants to use Uganda as a missionary nation. To send Ugandans to many, to the nations of the world, to take the gospel, and particularly the gospel of revival. And he has given us the redemptive gift of travailing prayer. There is that gift and anointing in this land that our people are able to pray and travail and bring to birth. Now we are going to take this gift and link it up with gifts from other countries, strength from other countries, and we are going to support one another. Where we are weak, they will support us. Where they are weak, we will support them. This is the purpose of this camp, to link up the body of Christ worldwide and form an army of God that will overrun the nations with the kingdom of God. I want to invite you, please consider laying down all other things and coming to join us. We are waiting for you. We are looking forward to have you. And may the good Lord bless you so much. Amen. The reason we are holding that camp this year is a theme that is called Finishing the Great Commission. And Great Commission is about what? Go ye into the other world. And make disciples of all nations. Do you know what nations are? Nations, nations are people groups. Communities. Even where you live is a nation. Your tribesmen are a nation. Your clansmen are a nation. Your social class, your club, your recreational circles, that's a nation. Don't just look at them. Go make disciples of them. Go as an ambassador of Christ. Renew your mind. Go bear fruits. Fruits that will last for eternity. Amen. The way I think is me. If I'm saying I've surrendered my life to him, that means I also need to give him my thoughts. If I begin also to care, the way I think, what thoughts do I think? Remember what Lord told the apostles? They were thinking certain things. He told them, take care, beware of the yeast of the Sadducees. And they said, maybe he's telling us about the loaves of bread he made for us. Maybe we didn't come with the bread. And Jesus asked him, why are you patient with the evil thoughts in your heart? Why are you entertaining evil thoughts in your heart? Amen. Amen. He saw something in their hearts as somebody thinks that's what he is. He, he said, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? When I fed the 5,000, how many remainders were there? When I fed the 4,000, how many remainders of bread did you, have, did you remain with? If you're silent, the thoughts they were thinking, 
they were like as if they were not evil. But they were not thoughts of faith. They were not glorifying the Lord. They had put him low. That is blaming us because we didn't bring bread. He is blaming us because we didn't bring bread. And Jesus told them, why do you entertain evil thoughts? He, he, he told them they were evil. But how much goes through our minds? More evil even than that. More evil than even what the apostles were thinking. Thoughts of covetousness, hatred, greed, despise, malice, the Lord looks at all of those. And he tells us, why do we entertain those evil thoughts in our minds? Because as somebody thinks in their hearts, that is the way they are. As you're saying, I gave him my life. Beware of the thoughts. The Bible says, the enemy, he sends fairy darts in our minds. He brings arrows maybe of doubt maybe of hatred maybe of fear maybe of worry and they enter into our minds and then we begin to worry but in our worrying we are like saying our God can no longer take care of us our God cannot protect us who unto me who is going to help me I am alone in this world and yet the Bible says there is no temptation that comes to you that is unusual but our God is faithful he will not leave us to be tempted beyond our ability our God is faithful our God is faithful. Amen. He will not leave you to be tempted beyond your ability. But behind every temptation, he paves a way for you to break through. If you're saying, go unto me, I'm on my own. In fear, in worry. It is like you're saying, God, you're not faithful. That our God is not faithful. That is called evil thoughts. And you've not given them to the Lord. You've given your you've handed over your life to Omutu yourself. Somebody walking with the Lord minds above the thoughts of their hearts. Bible the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare they are not canoes. They are powerful mukatonda, through God as we demolish every stronghold. And everything that exalts itself about Christ. And we take captive every thought. To bind them and subdue them to Christ. It means that somebody that gave their life to the Lord. They not just walk thinking about every thought that comes. The Bible says taking captive of our thoughts. Taking our thoughts captive. Amen. And bringing them to obedience in Jesus Christ. You cannot say that we gave our lives to Christ. And yet there is no way to control your thinking. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12. Be transformed. By what? By the renewing of your mind. The child of God, you cannot just walk while not minding about your mind. You need to be careful as to what is going on through your mind. Because the enemy throws fiery darts. 
Don't allow those arrows to guard your mind. There is a thought you can feel and you just know it's not from the Lord. I will not allow this thought. It doesn't come from the Lord. Because my life is surrendered to him. My thoughts belong to the Lord. There is a prayer that David prayed. It's around Psalms 124 and he said, Oh Lord, my thoughts may they be pleasing to you. And even may my words be sweet to you. It is not okay just living a sinless life. But may what we think be sweet to the Lord. He is the one who said that whoever looks at a woman and admires her, that means that person has fornicated against her. The Lord is not only mindful about our actions. He minds also about our thoughts. He also knows what we are thinking and what we are doing. He may count it you as you've sinned because of your thoughts. Praise the Lord. Amen. We talk about surrendering our life to the Lord. Walking as we are for the Lord. That is why we said one died. All of them died. But they who are living may not live for themselves. May they live for the one who died and rose again for them. Our life is measured according to the minutes. The days, even the years that are few that we have on earth. If we've totally surrendered our lives, let us surrender our time. May not the devil rob us of our time. May the devil not use the hours of our lives. Because every hour that passes never returns. And every hour that passes, what you've done in it is going to come back on that day you will stand before the Lord. And they will show you how you've spent your life. That hour is equivalent to a coffin. Oh. Is equal to a suitcase where you kept your life. But it is only stand now. If you allow the devil to spoil your time, he has packed your life in the hours that you've wasted. On that day, that hour is going to come back before you. You're going to be given a reward according to the actions that you did in that hour. Somebody who understands that begins to walk carefully. Bible learn to count the days of your life. Let us learn to number our days. Because all those days on that day, they are going to come back before that us. We that we may be given a reward as we, we did. We have looked at our thoughts. The third thing that shows that our lives are totally surrendered to the Lord are the words of our lives. Our words are equal to your life. You may say, isn't my life bigger than that? Your words are equal or equivalent to your life. Because the Bible says, what fills your heart is what the mouth speaks. It means that your words, they show what is filled in your heart. And your heart is you. If you will say that I've given my life to the Lord, you be, 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 be. may your words also be for the Lord. Together, let us read in the scriptures. Okay, Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. 37. Era mbagamba nti, buli chigamba chitali mu abantu chebogera, bali chiwoleza kulunaku olwo musango kubanga ebigambo byo bili kuweso obutukirivu ne ebigambo byo bili kusinza omusango. Mukama yebazwe. Amen. Ntibuli chigamba chitali mu every idle word. Men may speak 
they will give account of it on the day of judgment. For by your words, you'll be justified, and by your words, you'll be condemned. Katulize, Yesu Christo, adi dobramu wa febo na wona 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 na awe nkanya nkanya vigambo vya fe. Jesus has taken the whole of our lives and equaled them to the words we speak. That, that it's by your words that you'll be justified or you'll be judged. Before him, our words are equivalent to our lives. And what we speak can take us to hell or to heaven. Somebody who understands that, you get careful with the words of your life. Jesus said, and to the Jews, that I have many to speak to you. But I can't speak except that which I've heard from my father. Jesus was saying that if I had freedom, I would speak as I wish. But I can't just speak as I wish. I'll speak that which I've heard from my father. Because his life was totally surrendered to his father. But I would like to think about the church of Christ today. How many people are saying they surrendered their lives? And you hear the words in our churches. Gossip. That some are not true. Gossip. Accusations. False words that are spoken by people who say they surrendered their lives to the Lord. And the one they say they gave in their lives. His sins. He's saying that by your words you'll be justified or you'll be judged. That is why we say we don't know the one we have believed. If we understand the one we believe, then our words would be something that is why the Bible says you see them from their fruits. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And neither can a good fruit produce bad fruit. Beware brethren they that bring false words that are not godly. And remember the ungodly speech. Not only touch this person who has spoken, but they spoil the one who has heard. They bring sorrow. They bring self-hatred. They bring discouragement. They bring hatred. They there is something that is changed in your mind. But remember your thought is you. As somebody thinks that is the way they are. There is somebody that brings words that are not going to build you at all. But at the end of it all, they leave you angry. They leave you so discouraged. You've hated people. You're discouraged. You're fed up. As that person brought life, learn to tell people, don't you have another conversation? If you hear somebody bringing poison, tell them, don't you have another conversation? If you don't have another conversation, let us worship the Lord. Bring a song, we worship the Lord. But I don't want this conversation. Do not fear. Do not be ashamed. Because if you are ashamed, you are going to die. But I've ever been somewhere with some two brethren. We sat together. The conversation flowed and flowed and flowed. And then it went to a certain person. They began speaking, but their words were not words of life. I determined in my life that I'm not going to put a word. I kept quiet and began writing things. They went on and went on. 
I felt my spirit was getting wasted. And I wasn't wise to stop that conversation. They spoke for more 25 minutes. I felt like moving away. But I said, why did, they allow, why did I allow them to speak all those words when I was there? They had spot my thinking. They brought me to hate myself. It was like I was angry with them. But I didn't have the confidence to stop them. Brother, let me tell you. Let us decide. If you feel the conversation does not build, do not be patient with that. Don't allow to be to waste you when you are keeping quiet. Ask the brethren, don't you have another conversation? If there is no other conversation, let us sing a song, let us praise the Lord. It is better to give God the glory. And if somebody brings it and says, if they are bringing something that is going to waste you, ask them for other things. Because what they spoke about me, it's for them. I, mean, I don't want them to enter into my spirit to spoil me. Amen. We are talking about a word surrendering our lives. Don't think that if you begin putting principles that guard your life, you begin getting peace in you. Amen. My time is not mine. It is for my Lord. Every morning I ask him, Lord, what are you saying Even as I'm walking in that, I ask him, what do you want? What do you desire? How should I use this time? What do you want me to be in at this moment? If my thoughts I'm thinking, are they for the Lord of something else? One time Peter came to Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm going to Jerusalem, they are going to capture me, they are going to crucify me. And Peter said, Oh, no, no, my Lord. It's not even possible. What did the Lord reply? Get behind me, Satan. Do you see what Jesus called him? Go behind me, Satan. Why did he call him Satan? Jesus explained it. And he said, Kubanga, kubanga, tolooza biyakatonda, olooza biyabantu. Because you don't have thoughts of God, you have thoughts of men. Tugambi ebirooza biyo. We've said that our thoughts, they make you godly. Ebiya petero biyali biyabantu. Peter's thoughts we have men. Yesu na muita stand. And Jesus called him the devil. Mina. What you make your thoughts determines whether you're for God or for the devil. Get behind me, Satan. Because you don't have the thoughts of God. You have the thoughts of men. If you say you surrendered your life to God, guard your thoughts. Guard your words. Guard your time. You shall have peace with the Lord. You shall begin hearing at the leading of the Holy Spirit. As I conclude, lastly, that show that your life is totally surrendered to God. This is so important. Are the relationships. Your relationships with the people. Because God is love. And they that are in love, they are in the Lord. If somebody says they are in the Lord. And they don't have love. Somebody's lying. Some, that person is still in the darkness. Brethren, love doesn't cause us to do whatever our will. Love will force you. It will force you to forgive. It will force you to be patient. It will force you to have some control. There is somebody that does something that angers you. 
And you say because he's, he belongs to the Lord. The Lord loves him. I will be patient with him. Because love covers all wrongs. Amen. If I'm going to bring something I was born with, out, that which is of the flesh. Love will tell me. Love will tell me no. Love doesn't do like that. Be patient with that person. Give them some time. They shall grow. Love gives us patience with our people. Amen. Let us read the book of First John chapter two from verse nine. First John. Chapter two from verse nine. And verse 9. He who says that he is in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him. Ayogera nga ali mu musana na cha wa muganda wenga achali mu chiziki za ne kaakano ayagala muganda wabera mu musana era te wali chimwe sitaza na ya cha wa muganda wali mu chiziki za era atamulira mu chiziki za songa tamanyi ji agenda kubanga chiziki za cha muziba amaso mukama yebazwe amen ngambi yesu yebazwe praise the lord ichigambo kwagala the word love bulido twera bila mukama get the lord bulido twera bila mukama Whenever you forget the Lord, we bring in what is not love. No Somebody says I get I got fed up of that person. And yet they are born again, but they bring them out of their mouth. I'm fed up of that woman. Does God ever say he's fed up of somebody? Amen. But you hear what coming out of somebody's lips. That means their lives are not totally surrendered. Because the, because the Holy Spirit can say, don't speak like that. That is not godly. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43. Matthew chapter 5. And verse 43. The Lord was teaching. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Therefore, you shall be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Mwaulira bwebaga ambibwa nti oyagalanga munno ochawango omulabe wo ne nange mbaga amanti mwagalenga abalabe bamwe musabirenga ababa iganya mulioke muberenga abana bachita mwali muguru kubange enjuba ye ajazi kababi na abalunji kubange enjuba ye ajazi kababi na abalunji abatonye senkuba abatukirivu na abatali batukirivu kubanga we muna ayagalanga ababagala Muli na amperachi. Nabalo woza. Nabalo woza. Sorry. Nabalo woza. Tebako la webatio. Bwemuna salanga. Bwemuna. Bwemuna ala musanga paganda ba mwebo ka. Muna ba sinza. Muna ba singa yochi. Nabama wanga tebako la webatio. Kale mwe. Mubelenga batu kilivu. Kumanga chita mwari muguru Mwari omutu kilivu Mukama yebazwe Yesu yebazwe 
Have you ever heard a brother hmm? saying, I refuse to greet that sister? <laughs> he greeted me and I didn't respond. Have you ever heard of it? And we, pro- we claim we love the Lord. But Jesus is if you greet only your friends, then what of the tax collectors? Naba are they like that? Naba bi naba Even the thieves, they also love their children. Ba, 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 we they want to give them good things. But if you love only your own, the ones that do good to you, what difference is it with you and a thief? If you give him your life, he gives the son to both the good and the evil at the same time. He brings the rain, he gives both the evil and the good. And you love all people. And then, not because they are good, but because it's the Lord who made them. Amen. The life that has been surrendered to Christ has a difference. And if we walk that kind of life, people see a difference and they say that person is born again. Let the world begin to testify that we are truly born again. It has peace it brings. It has great peace. Amen. Sometimes I'm on the road driving. And you see somebody trying to struggle in your life. And yet they are wrong. But there is something I feel in my heart. I tell them I'm not wrestling against anybody. If they want, they can pass. Let them go. Sometimes you're driving and somebody just drives in. I'm like, I'm not wrestling against you. If you want, please go. It leaves me with my peace. Oh, 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 oh. But you may see. They quarrel, they abuse, they, they wrestle. There has to be a difference. That thing that you have seen. That you've seen in driving. You may put it in your life. Somebody has done evil to you. Somebody has despised you. Somebody has spoken ill about you. Say, I'm not wrestling against anybody. My God knows my heart. Amen. Amen. Let it give you peace. Amen. Amen. The Bible says you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. If that is what they spoke, my God knows the truth about me. me. That gives me peace. Don't lose your peace because they have spoken evil against you. The world is full of things that are unholy. Words that are evil. Thoughts that are evil. May May they not arrest you. They are not the ones to, to be your master. Our Lord delivered us from the dominion of darkness. And brought us into the kingdom of his son in whom we have peace. We have deliverance. We have forgiveness. In peace he gave us peace. Do not allow anything to captivate you. Do not allow the evil to reign over you. Why should they reign over you? David says they've, they've said they've dug a pit for me. They say when is he falling into the pit? But my faith is with you who guards my feet. That I may not sleep. Let us walk with peace. Amen. Amen. Your glory doesn't come from man. Your glory comes from the Lord. The one who called you by the name of his son. The one that called you his own. 
That is enough. May the world move with their words and everything. Stay with the peace of the Lord. Every day have a renewed joy before the Lord. And tell him, Lord, I thank you. You brought me from the kingdom of darkness. You put me in the kingdom of your beloved son. I thank you. There is no miracle greater than that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us conclude by Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Paul was saying and saying like this. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Esula ya kubiri. Uliniroma kumi ya abiri. Aha, uliniroma abiri. Na kumiru wamu ne kristo, na ye ndi mula musi kubuange, na ye kristo ye mula mumu onze, erobula mbweni na kakano mumu wiri, mbuli naru haku kilizo mwana katonda, e ya njaga na neye wayo kuruange. Aleluya. Tize na kumiru wamu ne kristo yesu. I was crucified together with Christ. Era katisinze mula mu. It is not believing, but Christ is in And the life that I have is by faith in Christ. The one that died for me. In peace, I have peace. No one can take that which Christ paid for me. Let us walk in Christ. And the peace of the Lord. Brother, I would like to ask you a question. Every day you're proclaiming you gave your life to the Lord. But today has the Holy Spirit taught you something? Have you got a revelation of something? What does it mean to surrender your life to the Lord? That you may walk as you belong to the Lord. With the peace of the Lord. All glory and honor belongs to the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The Trumpet Camp is back. Dr. John Mulindi, together with the World Trumpet Mission Team, invite you to the Trumpet Camp 2024, a time of deepening your relationship with God, connecting with like-minded believers, and many more ministry opportunities. The Trumpet Camp 2024 will feature Dr. John Mulindi and many other international speakers. And the theme this year is Finishing the Great Commission. The Trumpet Camp 2024 will take place from the 20th to the 27th of January 2024 at the Nations of Prayer Mountain, Seguko. For registration and more information, call 0771-930796 or 0708-495670. You can also go online www.worldtrumpetmission.org. The reason we are holding that camp this year is a theme that is called finishing the Great Commission. And Great Commission is about what? Go ye into the other world. And make disciples of all nations. Do you know what nations are? Nations are people groups. Communities even where you live is a nation. Your tribesmen are a nation. Your clansmen are a nation. Your social class, your club, your recreational circles, that's a nation. Don't just look at them. Go make disciples of them. Go as an ambassador of Christ. Renew your mind. Go bear fruits. Fruits that will last for eternity. Amen. Amen.